All right, fantastic. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us here tonight. I'm really excited to have a beautiful soul join us tonight to talk about a continuation of self-love because everyone knows that February is self-love here at the Thermography Clinic, and it's such an important topic. And it's not something that is just bubble baths and you know candles, right? It's a lot of hard work. And so I had the absolute blessing and pleasure of meeting Stacy a couple of years ago, and she has absolutely touched my heart in ways that I didn't expect and has helped me immensely as well, too, with my own self-love. And um, so I'm really happy to have Stacy Willis here join us tonight and talk about her, jo her journey um, and her journey to self-love. Uh, so thanks so much, Stacy, for being here with us again tonight. And uh, I know that people on this phone call here tonight that are joining us will certainly be touched by your presence as well. So thank you. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I feel, I feel pretty honored. I'm following a couple of, uh, you know, tough acts to follow. You've had some great people on talking about self-love. So I feel uh, very fortunate to be able to join you and everyone tonight. Bear with me. I do have some notes. Um, I've kind of been preparing for this and kind of thinking, you know, thinking my way through what, what I wanted to share. And I think really ultimately it's, it's just kind of my story that I feel um, I need to share. Um, and just the, the big thing with it is, is my, my journey through breast cancer. So um, that's when I really kind of got the, the wake up call in many ways but definitely um, it was a big eye opener in terms of the self-love piece. I really, I saw where the deficits were for sure. So um, yeah. So do, you want to, so do you want to tell people kind of, you know, who is, who is Stacy, but mm -hmm. kind of what, like where you were and what started you down this? I mean, obviously you had breast cancer, but I know you've got an incredible story that led up to this with the emotions that you were dealing with as well too, especially even in the job that you were in and how, yeah that all kind of came about. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And that was kind of something that I was kind of thinking about, like, where do I start with all this? Do I go right back to like when I was a kid? Like, cause really that's where everything kind of starts from, but like, that's true. Yeah. If you feel like if you please, this is your conversation tonight and your journey. So please, wherever you want to start with it with to share with people, please do so. Okay. Um, yeah. So ultimate, ultimately when I was thinking about, you know, where to start with everything, um, I did think when I started my breast cancer kind of journey, because that made me reflect on everything else. And um, it made me reflect on, you know, my upbringing. Um, and I have wonderful parents. There's never any blame associated with any of this. I want to preface that for sure. Um, but, you know, there was challenges being a kid and, you know, some different things. So I had that, um, had some tough spots with my relationships, um, you know, some, some, pregnancies that, uh, you know, didn't happen, um, you know, miscarriages and the emotions behind that I never dealt with. Um, I worked at a really tough job for a while, um, kind of made me think about the way the world works and the way people work. And, uh, I carried a lot, a lot of stress from that. And I'll kind of touch on that when I'm kind of talking about my journey, because it was inter I had an interesting conversation with my naturopathic doctor about all of that. But um, I guess, I guess too, I'd like to kind of share, I was saying to Catherine, I'd kind of like to share some excerpts from my journal um, when I was going through breast cancer, um, because this is about self-love. And, and to be honest, the whole journey through um, breast cancer was about rediscovering myself and actually like loving myself for the first time, um, really paying attention to my needs and it's unfortunate it took, you know, a very serious diagnosis, but um, it's been life changing actually for the better. And people are always amazed when they say for the better, like breast cancer for the better and like absolutely yes. Um, so I'll share a little bit out of my journal too, um, just to kind of kind of speak to the self-love piece and different aspects of it. But um, I guess I guess to kind of to start with the breast cancer piece. Um, I, I didn't have a family doctor at the time, and it was just a couple of um, couple of years after my son was born. He's seven now. I uh, I felt like my my right breast was congested. That was the only way that I could think of it. Um, and my intuition just kind of told me like something is going on here. But as per usual, you, you're looking after everybody else. You don't kind of look after yourself. I had no family doctor. Um, 
But then I just had that little gentle kind of nudge, you need to look after this. So hopped on the internet, made a list of all the doctors in the city, just started calling. And I ended up getting into a nurse practitioner at our um, women's wellness area here in the city. And I had one appointment. She's like, eh, I don't think anything's really wrong, but I'll send you for a mammogram. So that's the first thing with the self-love piece um, to me, intuition, trust it. Um, people say, you know, what does, what does intuition and self-love, what do they have to do with each other? And um, I guess going through all of this, it has kind of, you know, it's taught me to follow my intuition and trust that. And so often we push that aside and we push it aside for others and, and other things that are happening in our lives. And I believe that we really need to trust those gut instincts. And that is a form of self, self love, honoring ourselves and digging deeper into those things. Um, so yeah, so I, I went for the mammogram. Um, that was February 5th. Um, and I guess, you know, right. You're there, you have that, you know, you get your boobs mushed and you're watching faces and you're trying to look, you know, you're looking at the technician. Are they smiling? Do they have a weird look on their face? And, um, yeah, I just knew and, uh, you know, they're checking and rechecking and, and the radiologist actually said, I'd like to do a biopsy today. I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. And, um, it just so happened. I call it divine intervention. I really do. Um, ultrasound was available. She was available. I literally went right from mammogram um, over to ultrasound. She did the biopsy um, of one suspicious spot in my breast and one suspicious spot in a lymph node. And um, she sent me on my way. And uh, I, I pondered that moment because that was a recheck that probably wasn't going to happen um, because a year before that I had a technician or a radiologist, you know, do my mammogram and something looked off. So, um, so he said, well, we'll see and we'll see in six months. And I said, okay, great. So I went back at six months. He said, I really, it's, you know, it's pretty much the same, but you know, I, I guess I'll see in six months. Normally with what I'm seeing now, we wouldn't have called you back. And uh, he said, but I'll see you in six months. So this to me was the recheck that wasn't going to happen. So um, I definitely reflected on that and reflected on the blessings behind that and pondered, you know, where, where I was with my life and where I was with my self-love, self-compassion, all that sort of stuff, because you're, you're faced with your own mortality at that point, right? You, I didn't even have the diagnosis yet, but I just, I knew what was coming. Um, so I'd say the universe aligned <laughs> for sure there. Um, on February 12th, so not that long after, um, I popped in and saw my, my uh, nurse practitioner for the second time. I luckily snagged one and because I didn't have a family doctor. And I sat down and I just looked at her face and she said, I'm sure it was the first time she ever said it. She was like, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you have breast cancer. And uh, I looked at her and I said, I know. And she just kind of <laughs> looked at me strange and she was like, okay. And I said, no, I just felt it. I just felt it. And, um, and she, you know, I asked her a few questions that she unfortunately couldn't answer because I, had been researching as I do, and uh, I had 101 questions for her. And she said, unfortunately, I can't answer any of these. You'll have to wait till you talk to your surgeon or your oncologist. And um, I said, okay, that's great. Could I have a copy of my, um, of my report? Whatever you have from the mammogram, I'd like a copy of that and I'll see you later. And I don't even, it's like having a baby, right? You forget the pain. I don't even remember really how I reacted. I had to ask my husband and say, you know, did I, did I cry? I don't remember. He said, no, you just walked out of there and you're like, okay, what do we do now? And, um, I did tell my family, of course, and some friends. And, um, and then I just started like, what am I going to do here? Like, I'm, I want to live. I need to beat this. Like what happened? What has to happen next? Um, so 
I think it was February 20th. Um, I met with my surgeon, lovely, lovely lady. Um, she went through everything with me. She said, you're going to have chemo and then you're going to have a lumpectomy and then you're going to have radiation. And, um, she said, you have triple negative breast cancer. So, um, supposedly that's the worst kind and whatever. I, none of it is good. So I always find it funny when they tell you that sort of thing. But uh, she said, you're going to do chemo first just to see how you react to the chemotherapy, see if it actually kills the tumor, see what happens. Um, and it also helped shrink it a bit. It really wasn't uh, that large. I'll be honest, I can't even remember the size. Like, again, it's kind of something that's in the past. So, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't that large. And I, and I did have it um, in one lymph node. So we, we had the whole talk about what would take place. And she said, don't be disappointed, but I'll tell you right now with this type of cancer, though it responds well to chemo, most people don't have a complete response, meaning that you'll probably still have some tumor left. And so I listened to her and got all the information and she said, you're gonna see oncology next, great. And I walked out of there and I said to my husband, I said, you know, I feel I'm in such good hands with her, but one thing it's, I will have a complete response. And from that moment forward, my mindset was just, I'm, I'm want to live and I'm going to live and I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get there. So, um, left there, went on to kind of gather my people <laughs> and, um, and I had amazing people behind me, not just my family and friends, but I had old friends from high school. Um, I had, you know, prayer groups, you know, I'm not a religious person, but I'm absolutely spiritual for sure. So had prayer groups, people I've never even met before saying, you know, you, you can do this. And, um, I'll be honest, as much as I needed all that, it was hard to accept that it was hard to be vulnerable. And I think that's the other piece of the self love stuff, um, that I want to point out to people. Um, we're, we're a lot of, you know, caregivers, especially if we're moms and a lot of us, our jobs are, you know, caregiving every, pretty much every profession you can think of, there's a caregiving aspect in some capacity and we give so much of ourselves. And then when something happens, it's so hard to accept that back. And I, that, and that's, that's just a big piece with self-love, just being vulnerable and saying, you know, I, I do need you and I appreciate you and <laughs> thank God for you because this is, this is going to be big. And um, I set to gathering all the resources I could think of. And I did do the Dr. Google for a bit. Bad idea. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah. Um, and I just determined I, I don't want to be a statistic. So I don't, I don't really care about those statistics. So got off the Google and um, reached out to people that I trusted to get information. Um, my first resource really was my naturopathic doctor. Um, I'd actually saw his wife for many years. Um, she helped me conceive my daughter who's now 16. Um, so I reached out to her husband and he had 10 years of experience with oncology. So I sat down with him and he, he looked at my life from literally my birth. He asked me what my birth was like, what the pregnancy was like for my mom. Like he went right back to the very beginning. And, um, I, I laid it all out for him and I explained everything. And the end of it was me telling him about the job that I had. that was very stressful. And, um, he put his pen down at the end of our conversation and he said, did you ever wonder why you got cancer? And I mentioned that to some people and they're like, oh my gosh, like he's making it sound like it's your fault. Like that's what a, what a weird thing for him to say to you. And I said, no, actually it, it was great because he validated how I was feeling. He validated, you know, yeah, I have been wondering and I have been very curious and I've been looking into it. And, and I was happy that he said that to me. And I had actually been reading a lot um, by Gabor Mate He's, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with him, Catherine. Um, he is a, he's a family doctor. He's Canadian. He's done a ton of work on trauma. And um, he says in his book, he has a book, it's called, uh, oh 
oh gosh, it's about stress. Anyway, the body says no, yeah. or when the body says no. And um, he talks in that about, you know, most diseases are a result of things that we do or don't do. Um, and with breast cancer, the research says roughly five to 10% is actually hereditary. Most yeah. of it is something environmental. Um, so, you know, him saying that to me and saying, did you ever wonder? And then me already definitely wondering, um, it, it just made me feel like, you know what, I, I can take some responsibility for this. And, and Gabor Mate says, you know, it helps when we do take responsibility for our health and, and when things, when there's dis-ease in the body. And he said, don't look at it as responsible, like blame, look at it as, look at it as response able. And when I looked at it that way, I was like, man, that's pretty empowering. Like that, that means that, you know, I can do something about this. So at the end of that appointment, he gave me some, some great ideas about some supplements I could take, some things I could do. I took all the supplements to my um, oncology pharmacist. He said yes to some, no to some. Um, so essentially I took supplements all through my chemotherapy, um, all through my radiation. I also consulted with a wonderful homeopathic doctor that you connected me with. Um, and I mean, my radiation oncologist was amazed at the condition of my skin, amazed at how things healed. Um, I had 23, 23 or 25 sessions of radiation. So I was pretty crispy in there, but I really had no long-term effects from it. So I'm so thankful for that, for the homeopathic remedies and those supplements that I did take. Um, so I'm just going to glance at my notes for a second. Um, <laughs> Yes, back to the, the response able piece of it um, and how empowering that was. It made me really think about my thought processes and what I thought of myself, what I thought of my situation. And since then I've done a ton of reading. Joe Dispenza, um, big, she was, or he was really big for me, kind of figuring out the brain, the body connection. And ultimately, you know, we, we are the master of our own thoughts and our thoughts drive most things in our body. And that's where heart math kind of comes in, but I'll talk about that after. Um, but really I, I started to think about how I was thinking and thinking about myself and giving myself a little bit of grace for all the things that have kind of happened in, you know, my past life. I've got 47 great years but there's been, there's been a lot of things there. Um, so when I was going, you know, getting prepared for this and I've got my little journal here, um, I'll just read one little piece. And actually I, I drew it, I drew a sunrise and I put in big letters, forgive. And that is a huge piece I feel for self-love, um, forgiving ourselves. And there's so many times that we so hard on ourselves for things and we look back on things and just you know what about if I did this and what about if this could have been different and what about if I would have said this did like there's a million and one things you could you could do hindsight is always 2020 but the biggest piece of it for me and this was on April 18th so it was just um, after my first chemo which was not pleasant but I still I still had it in me where I really was like I need to forgive myself, but I need to forgive others. I need to let go of the burdens of things that I've held on to from the past because that is making me sick. I just knew it. I just felt that. Um, and then who we spend our time with, another massive piece, right? Yeah. And I had, I had um, getting into my journal here, I don't know. I had written on that. <laughs> you're being vulnerable right to the audience and, and I appreciate that because yeah. I I guarantee you every time I do a webinar I have at least one if not a couple of people that reach out afterwards with health heartfelt conversation about something that the person said that allowed them to be vulnerable but helped them so much in that moment because that's exactly what they were struggling with so Stacey mm -hmm. thank you 
for allowing us mm-hmm. to be part of that journey with you by because we're all we all go through different things right and that vulnerability mm-hmm. is what connects us to other people so thank you mm-hmm. it's i i really feel so strongly about sharing this and i've always been so reluctant like you know, nobody wants to hear this and you know what, maybe they don't, but you know what, maybe there's one person that it does resonate with because I know for me, other people's stories, that ha- is what has had such a profound impact on my healing through this. So I really, I have a great appreciation for it. Um, but I'd written on the 27th. Um, I really don't like to talk about cancer. Um, I did text my friend today and I do feel better but I'm gonna leave those groups on Facebook and Instagram that I'm in. Because of course, when you're searching for information, you hop on all these groups and you're just looking to connect with somebody who knows how you feel. But I said, um, the focus in those groups 24 seven is cancer. And I don't want that. I'm not cancer. Oh, geez. (laughs) Anyway, um, I have a disease that is cancer. I'm still a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister and I'm a friend. And it so happens cancer takes up a lot of my time right now, but it doesn't need to consume me. So that just makes me think about the self-love piece and like who you surround yourself with and how important that is. And don't compromise yourself or your values or how you feel. Don't let anyone make you feel lesser than you are. Don't take away your worth. And if you're, if you're with people that make you feel less, they're not your people. So, yeah. And, and, and I'm not saying that this group that, I mean, there's wonderful people in these groups and you can get so much information, but the focus absolutely is the disease. And I, I wanted the focus on the living piece. Right. So I needed to surround myself with those people. Um, and that's kind of another part where um, on the 4th of May, <laughs> going to probably be crooked here but worth I wrote it in big letters and to me that's another piece of the self-love part just know your worth and I and I wrote um know who you are know that you're worthy of love kindness and respect know that that's why you exist know that you um, are confident you deserve goodness you deserve health love and joy so choose that goodness that light and that love So, um, and another little part of it, and this piece of it um, really resonated, and and I did go back to reading my Bible a bit when I was going through this. Um, I was I was born and and raised in the Anglican Church. My my grandparents were very strong in the Anglican Church, and they they were a huge part of my life, like a huge part of my life. I spent a lot of time with them. and one of my friends from high school actually gave me a book and it was uh, the one year of daily prayers. So every day I would read on it, read it and reflect on it. And I found it interesting on the day that I started chemo, um, there was a meditation and it's, it was a prayer in sickness. And it says, um, it talks about, uh, you don't need to understand why things are happening. Just know that you are loved and that you will be cared for. That was the day I started chemo. And the day I ended, it said, trust in unfailing love. Don't rely on people or things, just have trust. You will never be abandoned and there's always a plan for your life. So again, back to the self love and just trusting that you are here for a purpose. And um, and every single person has, has their purpose and don't let anybody kind of, you know, push that down, you know, um, I really definitely found that through this journey, you know, this, this is my purpose, I feel. And though it's not at this time, my day job, um, I still want to share anytime I can. And that's why I really appreciate being able to do this with you. Um, just one more little piece. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And it's about perspective because man, Somebody telling you that you have cancer or any disease gives you some perspective for sure. And um, this was probably, oh, maybe three weeks before I was going to have surgery. So I was done uh, chemo. I was about three weeks into kind of trying to recover and, you know, get myself back up so that I could have surgery. 
and I won't read it all because it's kind of big, but um, it just so happened on this day, um, 19 years ago, my grandpa passed away. And instead of sadness, I feel really blessed to have him with me today. And he sent me kind of some of these messages, I feel. So it's like four pages. I'm not going to read it all, but um, just essentially know that you have a purpose. Um, believe in the power of love and connection. Um, look at where a person is now and discover the positive in them. Look at their challenges, but don't define them by their challenges. Look at the positives that they bring. Um, fear and guilt will set you up for inflammation. Mm. Surprisingly, I learned that how the big impact of our emotions on our physical health. Huge. Um, and we need to move from, you know, the messages that our parents put on us, the messages that our friends put on us. Um, and I just talked a bit about, you know, the impact of our parents, the impact of our friends, um, you know, how that sets us up. And I won't get into it, but I love anything to do with the brain. So neurologically, how that sets us up and our response is going forward for the rest of our lives. And that internal speak that we have, um, I know Kim, she talked about um, with you kind of getting in that loop, you know, the, the, the messages that you send to yourself. Um, and I talked about emotional chaos in family and the fear and the guilt that we have there. And um, just to understand that when one is hurting, I wrote that they need a quiet space, they need understanding. And with a diagnosis like cancer, so much as it, information is thrown at the patient they don't have time to think about what they need or what they value. It puts them in a place where they need to make quick decisions and everything is so urgent and that can be destructive. And I said, um, I will never say, you know, anything like I am this disease in any way, shape or form. I never, I never spoke like that. Um, I put cancers here in my breasts and it's attacking me. Those are words I'm not going to use. So I have like a big X through it and I have, I'm going to reframe that and I'm going to look at it this way, that cancer is filling a void in me and it was a vacant space that I had. And I left that space open for a biological process to go in there and fill the space. So the tumor, right? Um, so instead of having that warlike attitude, I needed to shift and I needed to see it as a messenger reminding me, this is going to be the part that gets me even after a couple of years. Um, that there's been a separation between myself and my energy and my worth and that I've allowed myself to become exhausted. And then I, this is my nerdy part a little bit. Our body's made up of 50 to 70 trillion cells and a tumor begins with one or two cells. And we can allow that to become our identity and our plan. But then we forgot about the other trillions of cells. And I wrote in big letters, you're a glowing force and you need to glow with love and joy and don't look at chemo to heal, look at chemo to be the tool to take out those injured cells and to heal the body. And really that was a big piece for me. Um, you know, people talk about, you know, oh, I hate cancer or F cancer or, you know, warrior or sick or fight or, um, one of the chemos is called, they call it red devil. I never called it that. I always called it my medicine because I thought if I'm using that language, my body is hearing that. Absolutely. And, and I don't want to fight against my own body. I want the exact opposite. Actually, exactly. I want to heal it. So I can't talk like that. Um, and then just this last piece of this, I said, cancer is one cell that gets separated from the whole. And it's actually the loneliest cell in my body. It's accumulated damage and it's so lonely it's lost its defense mechanisms. It's just replicating there. It's like an empire now, a lonely empire that is taking everything from my body and killing off other pieces of my body. And it's, it's starting the collapse of that empire. So I needed to look at it that way so that I could get through what what was happening in my body and um and i think you know the reframing piece is so big with self-love um 
you know, not always looking at things like, oh crap, you know, this happened to me. You know, it's reframing being like, why did this happen to me? Um, it's so powerful what, you know, the words that we say to ourselves, even silently, you know, our body hears those things. And we know that there's so, so much science behind that as well too, right? Oh, <laughs> there's hugely. so much science that, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza has done that shows the brain waves when you're thinking those negative thoughts and those attack thoughts and and my hats off to you too Stacey what you just read to us what a great way to reframe that because it is our bodies are made up of so many much more cells than that but they hear everything that we say and we know as women right and men as well too especially men men are not as vocal as what women are sometimes yes. as well too about their emotions right and absolutely your inner self-talk just absolutely can destroy you on so many levels. So thank you so much for sharing that. And sorry, keep going. I, I don't want to stop you. I just- No, 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 no. Um, so that was all in the time of, you know, waiting for surgery. So I went in September, had surgery, um, had my lumpectomy, um, sentinel node biopsy. Thank goodness had very few lymph nodes removed. Um, and, and guess what? I had my pathological complete response. So chemo completely killed the tumor in my breast and the tumor in my lymph node. And there was no sign of anything anyplace else. So yay <laughs> for that. Um, and then I went on and I had my, I think 23, 25 rounds of radiation. I was done that by November 12th. Um, and then I guess I, also in my journal on, uh, at one point I wrote down everything that I kind of, kind of did through this journey and I'll just buzz through it really, really quickly. I'm, I'm definitely paying attention to time, but, um, I, I did, I did go back to prayer. Yeah. Um, I did look back at my spirituality. That was a big piece of me when I was young and something along the way took me away from that. And I, I went back to that cause I felt I needed it. Definitely meditation um, exercise, uh, what a, what a way to show that you do love yourself is just to move your body. Um, and I did, I walked all through chemo. Some days it was just the end of the driveway, but I, I knew I needed to do that. Um, I was an awful sleeper. I had insomnia for like 14 years. So I really committed to, you know, my sleep, um, stretching, yoga, journaling. That's massive. I don't, I, I've been keeping a journal off and on since I've been 12. Um, it's so important for us to take the time and, and give ourselves the time just to sit and just write our feelings, write our emotions. It's so healing. People have no idea how healing it is. And also just to give yourself that time, just you deserve that time away just to sit and reflect on things. And, and people think that they have to have these big fancy journal prompts and all this stuff. It can be a few words. It can really be a few words. Um, lots of water, making sure that I was well hydrated um, and, and smells. Any, anything where you're stimulating your senses is so good for the body. So um, I got some incense. I had a ritual in the morning where I would do my meditation, burn my incense, just wake up all those senses. Um, I did do a little bit of emotion code work and I won't get into that, but just, you know, essentially just kind of looking at what is buried in me, you know, those, those emotions like grief and sadness, um, those things that, you know, if you listen, if you read Louise Hay's work, she attributes a lot of those past things, a lot of the emotions to different, you know, coming out different physiologically. Um, definitely she was bang on, you know, when I looked at my past stuff and my emotions and what I felt to breast cancer and actually right-sided breast cancer. I talked forever about all that stuff too, but um, I really kind of dug into, you know, my feelings. And, and I think a lot of times we push those things away. We're busy. We're like, yeah, I don't have, you know, yeah, that's upsetting, but I, you know, I don't have time for this. We don't really connect and acknowledge our feelings. And it's so important to name the feelings and just, acknowledge them and then just let them pass through us and not try to shove anything down, not try to push anything away. Um, I get into the cold showers. 
you know, the cold rinses, which now is cold dips. Uh, <laughs> last weekend I was in, in the ocean weekend. You, know, you are inspiring me, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Um, good food. I really took a look at, um, at, at my diet. I, I was a good eater for a long time. And then I just, I got in a rut and I guess I really, honestly, I didn't care about myself at the time. It's like, I don't care, garbage in, garbage around, whatever. Um, so I totally cleaned up my diet and I cleaned up my home. I got rid of the chemicals. We don't use chemicals to clean. There's no, yeah, there's no sprays. There's no, you know, there's no chemicals in this house anymore. Um, and I went back to my love of painting and creating because that just, it changes again, my geek part here, but it changes some things with the neural pathways and it just does beautiful things to help calm, calm the body. And finally my breathing, um, breathing exercises. Um, that's been, that's been a huge piece. And, and that kind of takes me into the heart math stuff. Um, so am I still good for time? Yeah, yeah, I know you're still good for time, but before we get into the heart math stuff, because guys, this is going to be wonderful what Stacey's going to do tonight, I and mean, she's going to talk to you about heart math, and then we're going to actually do, um, we're going to do a session together, so you get to experience it, but before that, um, if you have questions for Stacey or any comments or anything like that so far, please put it into the chat window, and we will address them, um, so if anybody has a question right now, you go ahead, use the chat window, uh, any commentary before we go ahead and get started with the heart math piece, because the heart math piece is huge as well, too. Mm -hmm. And while we're waiting to Stacey, you can maybe go into the heart math, but before we sure. do, we'll leave at the end, the very end. Um, yes. We'll talk about heart math, how people can get in touch with you and stuff like that, answer any questions, and then we'll finish the evening off with the with what you wanted to Sounds do. Great. Sounds great. Um, so I don't know how many people have heard of heart math. It's been around for 40 years, actually, or roughly 40 years. Um, there's been over 400 peer reviewed studies on it. Um, there's a whole heart math Institute in the States and um, the U S military uses it when they're preparing troops to go um, overseas or on deployment. And I've, I found out that I'm pretty sure it's, um, nurses in Calgary are using it as well. Um, yeah, so while I was going through all this, I, I got certified as a trauma sensitive heart math practitioner. And, um, you know, people think, you know, it, it has to do with breathing. So people are like, you know, there can't be anything fancy about it. And I'll be I'll be honest, there's there's really not. Um, but it's so powerful. And my, my dear friend, Barb Fletcher introduced me to it back in 2016. And at the time it, it just didn't resonate with me. So I did, I did not practice faithfully. Let me tell you, after my diagnosis, I was like, where's my little device? And I, I can just show you really quick. Um, I have my little, little heart rate variability device. It's just a little biofeedback device. Um, I dug that puppy out and I, and I started again because the benefits are just, they're, they're, they're too good not to do it. And, and I needed it. Um, I needed it for grounding. I needed it to self-regulate because man, my, obviously my anxiety was up there. Um, I needed it to help calm me. Um, I needed it to bring down the intensity of my emotions. I needed it to help for sleep. I needed it to help for focus so I could make good decisions because, man, you got a lot of information coming at you. Um, and I needed it because there's when you do heart math and you get into that beautiful dance between the heart and the mind, there's like 1,400 um, neurochemicals that are, are put out in our body. And, um, and those help, those neurochemicals help lower cortisol. So they help lower the stress hormone. They help um, raise up the happy chemicals, the happy hormones. They do, a, a, they help uh, lower blood pressure, which I don't know how I didn't have high blood pressure going through all this, but I didn't because of the stress. Um, helps with digestion, which I also needed help with because uh, chemo drugs are not friendly to the digestive system. <laughs> right. And um, so I needed all the help I could get with that. And also it helps raise your immune function. So did I ever need that? Um, 
So just it's it's a simple breathing technique, and um, but it does a lot. <laughs> Um, and I, and when I talk to people about heart math too, like, I don't, I don't really get into the science of it, even though I'm kind of the science -y geek, because it, it really, honestly, it doesn't matter. Um, it just, you just need to know that when you connect to your heart space and you think elevated emotions, so things like, you know, joy, caring, um, gratitude, when you connect to those elevated emotions, or, you know, if you feel more comfortable just going to a happy, safe place. When you are able to do that in your mind and then you're able to regulate your breath very simply, um, you, you just do so much good. And the heart is more than a pump. People think, yeah, it's just there, it pumps the blood. <laughs> it actually generates a huge magnetic field. That field can be measured up to, um, up to three feet from the body. So this is a beautiful thing to use with children. This is a beautiful thing to use with anyone who's going through a difficult situation to sit and breathe and do heart math together. Because when you bring yourself to a state of calm and a state of regulation, um, people up to three feet from you also come into that beautiful state of coherence with that, that nice dance between the, the, the heart and the mind. And, um, they did a little measure. I thought it was interesting. They did a little measure of the magnetic frequency from the brain and it goes out like an inch. <laughs> yeah. So nobody's doing a whole lot of stuff with the, you know, the brain power. It's, it's the heart. The heart is so powerful and more messages go from the heart to the brain than the brain to the heart. So when you can get control of your breathing, it sends a message to the brain to say, Hey, we're okay here. You don't have to send out all those funky hormones. You don't have to send out the cortisol. No stress needs to go up. The heart rate doesn't need to go up. You know, you don't have to get ready to fight, flight, or freeze. Everything's okay. So um, for a while, I did use my, it's called inner balance. I use the little device, the biofeedback device. But it's, the more you practice, it's like going to the gym and, you know, you, you get that perfect bicep curl and you have perfect form. When you exercise your heart, through the breathing with heart math, it's a muscle. So it remembers, there's muscle memory there. Cause you can miss the gym for a month when you go back and do the bicep curl. It's like, yep, this is the, this is the good spot. And it's the same with the heart. So when you practice heart math, when you're in a safe spot, when you're not stressed, when you're in that stressful situation and you're like, okay, I'm gonna do my heart focused breathing. Your body's like, okay, I remember this. This is the part where we don't put out the cortisol. We don't need to freak out. Don't need to get the blood pressure going. Everything's okay. So it's just, it's so incredibly powerful. Um, and, and I ask people, you know, what, what is your emotional diet? What is it like? You know, is it anger? Is it frustration? Is it um, worry, irritation, um, resentment, fear? Or is it more on the care and appreciation, courage, pride? And if people come back to me and say, oh, no, it's, it's frustration or it's fear, let's breathe together. Let's help regulate your nervous system. Let's, you know, let's get you to that nice, sweet dance. Mm -hmm. And um, it brings people into a window of tolerance. We all have a window of tolerance. We have that, that nice, sweet spot. And when we go above that, there's a reaction. And when we go below that, there's a reaction. So when you go above that, it's that hyper arousal, you're irritated, um, difficulty relaxing, you're hyper vigilant, um, you know, heart's racing, you're kind of, you can be crabby, you know, irritated. And then when you go below the window of tolerance, you know, some people, they dissociate, they just, they kind of go outside their body, it's too big to handle. Um, and they just don't, they, they lose their ability really to connect sometimes. So again, with heart math, you practice that brings you into that nice window of tolerance and, um, and it balances things out mm -hmm. and the beauty of it too. It's a tool that can be used even when you're in a state of, you know, when you're in that state, that stressful state, it's not like, okay, I need to do this beforehand. I need to do heart math. Of course, it's awesome if you do, because 
you know, before I would go in for a scan, I would do my heart focused breathing so that when I'm sitting there waiting to have, you know, that scan anxiety that they talk about when you're waiting to go in for the, you know, the mammogram checkup or the CT scan, do your heart focused breathing, help calm everything. But then if you're laying on the table too, and you feel the anxiety rise, do it there too. Do it in traffic. Do it if your child is acting up. Do it, get them to come sit with you. Sit three feet away from you on the couch. Do some heart focused breathing. And because they're within that realm, that energy, they're going to feel it. I, I use it with my own kids, especially during COVID. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I went through all this during COVID. So, you know, I had COVID and the cancer piece and my children, you know, were stuck in the house with me. My partner was, we were all, you know, we were, we couldn't get away from this. So there was a lot of heart focused breathing and it, and it wasn't always the kids that were, you know, doing it. It was usually me snuggling with them and doing the breathing. And I find myself doing it with my son, you know, a lot of times at night, just, you know, he's, he's a little stressed right now with, we're still wearing a mask and he's seven and he's like, this is a challenge. Mom come lay with me. So I lay with him. We do some heart focused breathing. He's just, he's golden after that. So it's a good space. And I find too, um, I want to touch on a couple of things that you mentioned Stacy real quick. Mm -hmm. Because because the environment we live in, whether, you know, even before COVID, um, and I was one of these people too, right? So that's why I can relate to it. Stress junkie, right? I'm sure mm-hmm. everybody on this call can relate to that at some point in your life, or maybe you're in that now, is that you become so addicted to the stress of like, go, 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 because you have lost your own identity, that you feel that the that you're accomplishing or you're successful because you are in this hyper vigilant state all the time because you're like rush 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 and go 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 busy so busy right you feel validated that you are accomplishing or you're successful because i spent 19 years in the corporate business world and let me tell you i absolutely without a shadow of a doubt became a stress junkie mm-hmm. and i felt like if i wasn't in that zone of go 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 constantly that I wasn't being effective. I wasn't being effective for my clients. I wasn't being effective for, you know, the company and, and, you know, driving enough revenue and being there for my clients that every hour of the day or night, and that's not healthy, which is what led to my own, you know, um, health issue a few years back. But, um, again, I relate to people in that, that sense too, just like you, because you were that same type of person. It was just go, go, go. And you're always so busy looking after everybody else that you didn't take time for you and understanding how your emotions are. So being in that stress junkie mindset all the time is not healthy. You're not supposed to be in that fight or flight all the time. And I had to learn that the hard way. And now I help my own clients through thermography to understand that too. But with heart math, and I just want to put a plug in here because after 19 years of being that way myself, I still have large tendencies to go that route because I'm still trying to coach and train myself as well because 19 years of a behavior that my body got so used to, right? Yeah. But the nice thing is now is that I catch myself faster, right? And every time mm-hmm. I catch myself, I reward myself by saying, Ooh, good for you, girl. You got it. You got it faster this time. But what I want to share with people is that when you're in that stress junkie mindset, you don't realize how out of coherence you are with your own heart yes. and breathing. And so I found that since you and I did the heart math and you helped me with the heart math as well, too, I find that when I get in my racy state again of, Oh my God, I got to do this, do this, do this, because I'm also one of those people that do 27 things on my to-do list to think that I'm superwoman and I should be able to get those all done in around a day. I find that I will grab my heart math. And even though I know I don't need the little tool, mm-hmm. it's helpful to plug it in and totally pay attention when I'm in my state. Right. Yes. So that tool is so important so that you can see on the screen. Okay. I'm totally not in coherence right now because it's showing up red. But then Mm -hmm. what happens as you start to get there, right? So I just wanted to share that because you had made comments about that. And and I really wanted to connect people to that stress junkie mindset, because I know 
a lot of us are in that state. So thank you. It, it becomes our baseline. It does. becomes our baseline and, and our, our breath just controls so much and we don't realize it. So we get our baseline way up here and we breathe shallow and, you know, we, we don't take those nice gentle breaths. And the thing with heart math is it's, it's not for relaxation. People are like, Oh, you do that. That's your relaxation. No, nope, it, it's not actually, um, I'm not taking a big deep breath. I'm, I'm breathing in roughly four to five seconds or whatever feels comfortable. It's, it's a little bit more than your normal inhalation, exhalation. And the reason for that is because the science shows that that helps regulate your nervous system. That helps put you in that beautiful window of tolerance instead of being all in that, you know, way in the, in the crazy hecticness or like, oh, this is too much. I'm shutting down. See ya. <laughs> And, and let's talk about, you know, because, you know, my passion is with women's breast health as well, too. But let's talk about breast cancer, because when your cortisol levels and your hormone levels, you know, are all off all the time and they're really high. I'm sorry, but 84 percent of all breast cancers are HRT related, which is hormone driven. Right. Mm -hmm. And when people think of hormones, they think, oh, I need to take some you know medication to regulate my hormones. It's not necessarily the medication. Exactly. What's happening in the emotional body and the nervous system, the neurological system, which heart math can also help with as well too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was always in, I was, I was functioning way up above my, my window of tolerance. And I, if there was a way to measure what my cortisol and my stress hormones were like, I, it, I'd probably break it. You know, I break that. <laughs> and, and, um, yeah. And I stayed there for a, an extended period of time and I have no doubt um, and just with that, Catherine, I, I am in a group. I am in one Facebook group of women with triple negative breast cancer. Um, it's international. I think there's like five or 6,000 of us now. And we had a little thread going one day about how many people felt that their cancer was stress related. And I think the last time I looked at it, there was roughly like 200 and some comments and everyone talked about a stressful event, stressful past history, and especially where mine's triple negative breast cancer. So it's not driven by hormone. It's not driven by, you know, the proteins, the HERS2 or whatever. Um, mine was environmental and environmental, not just, you know, the environment. So in my case, um, you know, not using sunscreen for the longest time, not looking at, you know, what are my D3 levels, vitamin D3 levels. I didn't never get that checked. Um, I misused alcohol for a while my stress levels were extremely high um, from my work, but also just from personal life stuff. So um, yeah, once, once I reconnected with heart math, um, I mean, I feel like a different person now and I'll be honest, like even my breast health and just to speak about, you know, my thermography scans, I've had a few with you and um, I mean, they've changed. The inflammation has changed. And yes, I, you know, the diet and water and like all those other factors. But the biggest piece was connecting with those emotional things and reconnecting with my heart space. And that's what I love about heart math. I, I have reconnected with my heart space, reconnected with my breath. And um, I mean, that's your life force, right? Your breath is your life force. And I've, I've reconnected with that. And, and my thermography images show that there's there's been positive changes so I mean the, the proof is there plus I feel like exactly. a million bucks <laughs> yeah exactly it's there it's there yeah yeah fantastic I love this I could keep talking to you but I know we're at 725 yeah. here. so um if anybody does have anything to say, I, maybe you guys don't even know how to use the chat but um I'll tell you what I'm going to take everybody off of mute for just a second um because I know I was on another session one other night and people couldn't find the chat window. So let me just uh, take everybody off mute here real quick. Just while you're doing that, Catherine, I can, I can let people know that like I, I am meeting people in person. I have been doing that all through COVID. Um, yeah. I have a great, I have a great space up, um, up uh, 1299 Hanwell. I'm in the enlightened clinic with some colleagues of mine. Um, I've also met with people through zoom, 
on the phone. Like I'm, I'm really, I feel so passionate about this. I mean, I'll, I'll meet with people pretty much any way that they want to. Um, right now, right now I'm doing weekends cause I, I do still work full time, but you know, I, I'll make, I'll make any arrangements I can because I really, I feel really passionate about this. Um, you know, it's lived experience. It's proven to me that how beneficial it is. And, um, and I also do, I also do Reiki and, um, kind of in, I always integrate heart math into that. And I kind of, I can be pretty intuitive. So when I'm working with people with Reiki, you know, we can, we can get into some good kind of healing conversations and, um, yeah, while, while I was going through all this too and, and doing the heart math, I also did my natural therapy, um, got that designation too. So I'm a reg- registered natural therapist as well. And, um, so that, that can be helpful when it comes to, you know, the, the Coverage. cost and that sort of right. thing. Yep. But, but I would never turn anyone away. Like I, I really feel passionate about it. So. All right, so I've uh, for those of you that are muted, if you wanted to ask a question to Stacy, please feel free. We're going to do about one minute, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to close up this evening with doing um, a heart math coherence session. People um, can reach out to anytime. No. Um, Stacey, can you also, oh, is there a question or a comment for Stacey? All right, Stacey, can you, uh, no questions, but I want to say excellent job, Stacey. So thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks. Um, Can you just type in the chat window real quick, Stacey, how people will get in touch with you? Sure. That way there, if anybody wants that information, just copy paste that. And um, you can always reach out to me as well too. And I can give you Stacy's information as well. Fantastic, thanks Stacy. All right, yes. we, uh, sorry, go ahead Stacy. No, I was just gonna say, definitely um, reach out to Catherine too and, yeah. and we can get connected. Absolutely. All right, so. Oh, Stacey, I think I might've just muted you. Hang on a second. I did. There we go. Okay. All good. So let's go ahead and do the heart math. Um, sure. As we wrap this up and do you want me to share it on my end in the screen so that people see it or what do you want me to do? Or do you want no, to No, just- I'm, I'm, I'm just going to talk us through it. Oh, and, fantastic. Um, yeah. Yeah. So just, I, I invite you to find, um, Kind of a comfy spot there and and if it feels okay you can uh, take and place your your hand on your heart that gives you a spot to kind of focus on you can close your eyes if you'd like um, you can keep them open and just have like a gentle gaze ahead of you but it, it, it's very simple you just think of a thought um, or a moment where you felt appreciation gratitude or love and um, or you know if if it's hard to feel those sorts of emotions, which it can be sometimes, um, it's hard to go there for some people. You can think of a place where you feel safe. So maybe there's a spot in the woods, maybe you have you know, a favorite place down at your cottage, just anywhere where you feel safe, secure, walking in nature. And you just breathe through that heart space and you just gently breathe in, um, four or five seconds, just a little deeper than your normal inhalation and just four or five seconds out. And you just focus on, um, you focus on that positive thought or that beautiful place where you feel safe. It's just four seconds in, four or five seconds, four or five seconds out. It's heart focused. Just let the calm wash over you. A beautiful breath. Relax the jaw and the shoulders. Relax 
relax your hands if they're clenched. You know, if you have your hand that's not on your heart clenched, just relax that. Stay here for a minute. And that's one minute. You want to shift your focus back to the room that you're in. Give yourself a little wiggle. I love this. <laughs> and you just did some heart focused breathing and it really is that simple. And people look for it to be something complicated, but it, it's not that. When you, when you combine an elevated emotion, um, with that beautiful, you know, rhythmic breathing, just a little bit deeper than your own natural breath, you bring yourself into coherence. You do all those wonderful things that I talked about with your immune system and your blood pressure and, you know, sleep and focus. And after you practice it a little bit, you can then feel those feelings and, and feel them and project them onto yourself. And people do struggle with that piece. People are like, okay, I can do that breathing piece. But when I say now take that love and that care and that appreciation and that pride and, and let that wash over you, it's hard because that's that's the self-love piece, right? That's giving giving back to yourself, but it's so important. And yet it's so hard mm -hmm. for us to do that, right? Yes. So yeah. Stacy, I thank you so much from my heart to yours for being on here with us tonight and sharing this because what a way to end February with the, with my webinars with people, with your talk tonight about self-love because this is the real nitty gritty stuff, right? This is the stuff that we all struggle with, men, women, and children. And, you know, but yet it's the basis of moving forward in our lives as well too. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and thank you for everyone who's here. I feel, um, I feel very blessed. Thank you. Yeah, I think we all do. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Lots of great comments coming in here. People thanking you uh, for such a great session. A fantastic session. Thank you. Very good. Informative. Lots of little hearts going on as well, too. So thanks, everybody, for joining tonight. I will be posting this um, out to my Facebook page. Um, on my YouTube channel so that if you have friends or family that you want to share this with, please feel free to do so because you never know who may need St Stacy's message. So thanks again, uh, Stacy. Thanks. Bye-bye.